Hi guys and welcome to another Divi video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well today we're going to create another eye-catching button. In our last video we did this color changing button. It sort of grows when you hover over it. In this one we're going to do this button that jumps and when you hover over it, it grows and starts to change color. And that's pretty eye-catching right there. Of course, we've got a little bit of box shadow underneath on the jump also. Now we're going to write a bit of code to do this today. Don't let that put you off. Any CSS code I write, I'll put below the video and you can use it and change it however you wish. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the Visual Builder. While that's loading, I'll show you where I'm going to write the code today, which is in the Theme Customizer in the additional CSS panel. To get to the Theme Customizer, go to your dashboard, down to Divi, and then Theme Customizer. Or you can also get there from Appearance and then Customize. Once you're in there, you'll find additional CSS at the bottom of the pile right there. OK, well, let's get started. First, let's create our button. We'll get rid of this one. OK, and we're going to add a regular Divi theme button module. There it is right there. And the reason mine's purple and then blue is that's the way I've got it set up in my theme customizer. If we go back here, you've got buttons in the main route here. And you can set a regular style and a hover style. OK, so I'm going to leave mine pretty much like it is there. Of course, when you move down, you can link your button to wherever you want to take your visitors. Let's put the link in there. If you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking to a different site or somewhere that's not on your website, put it in a new tab so your website stays open. So let's jump across to the design. First thing is alignment right here. You can put it right left. For me, I'm going to have mine right in the middle. I really don't want to change anything about the text. You can make it light or dark. Works perfectly well as light for me there. Here you can make custom styles for the button itself. I'm going to leave the color, colors as they are. Now if we want to custom style the button, we just hit the switch, turn it on. Text size is fine and like I say, the text color is fine. I'll leave the colors as they are there because we're going to write some CSS. I don't want the little icon that appears when we hover over it. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make our button a bit chunkier. So I'm going to give it some padding on top and bottom. I'll give it 20 on the top. Just put the 20 in. It'll put the picks in for you. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. And let's put 30 in left and right. There we go, we've got a nice chunky button that will show off our colors nicely there. Okay, I'm not going to give it any box shadow, but um, we will make it grow on hover. And to do that, we need to go down to transform. And to set a hover state, and this is common to most DV modules, hover over the black legending there and you'll find a little arrow. Click on it, it'll give you a desktop or non hover state and a arrow which is a hover state when your mouse is on it. For the hover state I want to increase it by about 30%. There we go so it's quite a bit bigger. There's when we're hovering over its size and there's where we're not. Okay so presuming we're happy with everything that's going on here we can save. The only other thing we might want to change is the time it takes to go from that state to this state by default in the Divi theme is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. I'm going to slow mine down for a bit of drama. So I'm going to go to Advanced and down to Transitions. And I'm going to use 600 milliseconds instead of the default 300. Again, just put in the 600. It'll put in the milliseconds for you. You can use the slider and you can fine tune with the little arrows on the right there. Don't want any delay. Want it to happen straight away. And the speed curve I'm going to use is ease in, ease out. Play with the speed curves and choose what's best for you. But this, for most hover effects, works perfectly for me. 
OK, as we're going to target this with some CSS, we need to give it a class name or an ID. We're going to use a class rather than an ID today. When you use classes, you can apply them to any new buttons or anything that you want to uh, add. So here's CSS ID and classes. I'm going to add a class. And we want to make it something that's going to make sense to you. So let's select BTN. And the button's going to jump. So BTN JMP, button jump, perhaps. Call it what you will. As long as it's unique, you don't want to have any other classes with the same name. Could cause issues. All right, so we should have everything we need here. Let's save this. We'll save our changes. Now we can go to our theme customizer. And I'll have to refresh my customizer. Let's refresh this page. So that's still got the old jumping button on it. There we are. There's our new button. OK, so to make it jump, we've got to sort of create an animation. So I'll start writing here. And don't worry about copying me in real time. I'll put any CSS below the video. And you're welcome to copy it. So we gave it a class. Class always has a period. And it was BTN JMP button jump. Let's open and close some curly brackets. And inside those curly brackets is where we want to create our animation. And we first thing we need to do is give an animation a name. Dash name. And let's call it button jump again BJP. We can't call it the same semicolon. Now we've got to decide how long we want our animation to take. So it's just jumping up and down continually. So I'm going to say a second. So that's going to be animation duration. I'll say one second, semicolon. And how many times do we want to do what we're going to do? Basically, we're going to change the margin so it looks like it's jumping up and down. So let's say animation, iteration count. I want it to just keep going and going and going. You can put 1, 2, 3, 10, 100, however many times you want to do it. I want mine to just keep going, so I'm going to say infinite. Great. So we've created that. Now we've got to actually decide what we want to do with this animation. So let's go in here, jump down a couple. And to create the actual animation itself, we're going to say at keyframes. And then the name we created for it, which was BJP at the top there. And then let's open and close some curly brackets. And again, inside there is going to, where we're going to put what we want it to do. So at 0% when it starts, 0%, and open and close some curly brackets. What do we want it to do? Well, at 0%, I want the margin at the top to be at 0, or to remain at 0. So I'll say 0 picks. And let's move down, and let's do, say, 50% halfway along. And again, oops, close some curly brackets. Let's say margin, top, whatever the amount is. So I'm going to raise it by 15 pixels. So I'm going to say negative 15 at the top, which will pull it up. Negative 15 pixels, semicolon. As you can see, that's bouncing up and down now. But let's give it a bit of a shadow underneath at the halfway mark there. We'll say box shadow. And let's give it a zero left and right. And I'll give it five up and down. And let's give it a spread of, say, 10 pixels and a dark gray color. And let's just refresh the page. As you can see, it's got that box shadow on it now. It looks like it's sort of jumping off the page a little bit. Okay, when we hover over it, 
I want it to stop bouncing and I want it to start changing colors. So let's create another state for this up here. And what I'll do is I'll copy all of this and drop down a couple and paste it in there. And after the button jump, I'm going to put colon hover. No spaces between the colon and the H. Make sure we've got that curly bracket in there. And we'll call this a different name. B instead of BJP, let's call it button hop or something like that. So BHOP. And for this one, let's just put our semicolon in there. For this one, let's make it take a bit longer so we can see those colors changing. I'm going to make it five seconds there. And iteration count, that's fine too. And we've got to change this name here, obviously, because we've changed the name up above. Okay, so at 0% on the hover, I don't want any margin at the top, and I'm going to give it a background color. So that's fine, not, not picks, but I want a background color, let's say background red. And at 50%, again, I want zero margin at the top. I don't want any box shadow, but let's give it a background blue instead. Now let's finish off with the same color as we started with, which was the red at 100%. So there's no sort of jump. So we'll say 100%. Open and close some curly brackets. And again, margin top, zero picks, and background red. So let's have a look. It's bouncing away then, and when we hover over it, so it's growing and it's stopping bouncing, but I'm not seeing the color change there. And what we are actually seeing is my customize button background color. So if I take that away, hopefully our color change should come through. Now let's go back out of the additional CSS, back to our buttons where I've got my button styles in. And let's take the background color away from here. Now let's go back to our additional CSS. And let's go over Yep, now we've taken that off. We've got our color change. And that's going to get your attention pretty quick. So when we're not hovering on it, it's bouncing up and down with that little bit of box shadow. When we are hovering over it, it stops bouncing and grows and change color. That is a pretty attention grabbing button right there. So I hope you've enjoyed that today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.